Okay, listen up, college kids. There's a new law in Tennessee that may affect your internet use. Plus, Blair Herder will be here to give us a rundown on what games you'll need to play to survive the Thanksgiving holiday. And we'll make full contact with Alison Hayslip as she learns some deadly moves from the Extreme Fighting Association. I'm Layla Cayley, and this is The Feed We Can Review. Welcome to the Feed Week Review. Over the next half an hour, I'll be here to give you the biggest headlines from the world of technology, video games, and pop culture. These are the stories that are shaping your world, and it's the only news you need to know. Now, Dallas Mavericks owner, billionaire blogger, and HDNet chairman Mark Cuban is in a bit of a pickle with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC is charging him with insider trading after Cuban suspiciously dumped his shares of the search engine Mama.com just before the stock plummeted. Cuban's sudden sale of the stock raised a red flag for the SEC because if he had held on to his shares, he would have lost three quarters of a million dollars. The story is similar to Martha Stewart's case, and like Martha, if Cuban is convicted, he could face jail time and will definitely keep you posted. Now, our president-elect is continuing to embrace a new media as he heads to the White House. Barack Obama will continue his regularly scheduled Saturday address. The videos will be uploaded on YouTube and then embedded on his change.gov transition site. In these videos, he talks about the issues he'll tackle in the White House, like this week's speech about climate change and rising energy costs. But too often, Washington has failed to show the same kind of leadership. That will change when I take office. My presidency will mark a new chapter in America's leadership on climate change that will strengthen our security and create millions of new jobs in the process. I can't wait to see how many subscribers a White House channel on YouTube will get. I guess we'll find out. Now, moving from presidential matters to state affairs, the RIAA is most likely celebrating a new law in Tennessee surrounding Internet piracy. Now, colleges and universities are responsible for policing campus computers for copyright infringement. And if they get 50 or more complaints about things like pirated video games and illegal downloads of MP3s, they're required to step in. Of course, the institutes of higher learning aren't so happy. The new rules will cost them almost $10 million dollars to put a system in place and another one and a half million to maintain it. Okay, those were the stories this week that affect your world, so now it's time for me to get a little feedback. The new law in Tennessee could eventually be passed in other states, so I want to know if you think institutes of higher learning should be responsible for policing their networks for copyright violations. No, they should not be required to police piracy because I believe that there are far bigger problems to worry about on whether or not I download a song or not. You know, I don't think that universities and stuff should wa watch what their students download because it's an invasion of their privacy and people should be able to download what they want. I go to UT and there are 50,000 people on one network. And if they had to start monitoring every time someone illegally downloads the Bob Dylan's Gates of Eden, nothing would ever get done. Wow, strong feelings on this subject. On the one hand, artists should get paid for their creations, but it seems like every citizen's piracy is at stake, and I agree with you guys. Well, if you prefer to buy your films on DVDs rather than download them from the web, here's some news for you. The latest film from Pixar, WALL-E, was released on DVD this week, and Chris Hardwick took a trip to Jet Propulsion Labs for the occasion. While he was there, he met the brains that inspired the robots, as well as WALL-E himself. <laughs> Hey, this is Chris Hardwick. I am here at my Disneyland. This is JPL Jet Propulsion Laboratories. I'm going to talk to some of the brainiacs here who designed the robots and rovers that actually inspired the film WALL-E. <laughs> WALL-E marks the ninth film in Pixar's empire. In case you don't know, it's about an abandoned robot who teaches mankind a thing or two about being human. bring the concept to reality, the animators turn their inspiration to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratories, where the latest research in robotics and unmanned space vehicles are realized. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the stuff you're working on? Well, I'm working on a couple of really exciting projects. I'm working on um, a, the new Mars rover, and I'm also working on Athlete, the all-terrain, hex-limbed, extraterrestrial explorer. It's a big six-legged robot, and that thing is going to be like 25 feet tall. Upon close inspection, it's clear that a lot of the robot designs and functionality from the film are based on real-world counterparts. All, all of our robots have those little eyes, like Wally has. You know, they have stereo cameras that let them see obstacles ahead of the robots. And we use that on almost every robot that we build. Wow. Basically, you know, you can have one of these instead of having an astronaut. It's not going to get tired, doesn't have to eat or sleep, or doesn't need oxygen, and if it, you know, breaks its arm, it's not going to sue you. Wally! 
You worked very closely with the, with the artists and, and Pixar Studios, so what was that process? It was great. Uh, they actually called us up and said, we want to take a tour of your lab, see your robots, learn a little bit about robots. So they actually came to our lab and we took them around, showed them a little bit about um, our walking robots or climbing robots, robots that drive around, and um, they even wanted to hear what the robots sound like when they moved around. Once the data on JPL's robots were implemented, Pixar turned their designs over to Oscar-winning sound engineer Ben Burtt, whose work on the original Star Wars makes him the best man for the job. It was a sound designer's dream because you could invent so many unknown things. How do you convey emotion in a series of beeps and blips? That you pick sound effects that have an emotional inflection to them so that you, you can make Wally sound curious by having the sound go oh, like this rather than the word saying I'm curious. And with the nuances and sound married to the JPL inspired designs, the inanimate is brought to life. Is it possible? Maybe I could set you up with a friend of mine? No? More? <laughs> Attack of the Show is the show that I'm on uh, from G4. Would you say that I'm probably your favorite host on the show? <laughs> I'd call that a yes. Wow. I just want to say thanks to Disney and Pixar for actually making a film about robots, and then thanks to JPL for showing them how to make a movie about robots. JPL, you are my everything. Thanks, Chris. Now, Pixar's come a long way since they created that little animated desk lamp, and their next animated feature is called Up, and it's in theaters on May 29, 2009. Okay, guys, time to see what's buzzing on our website, so let's check in with our G4TV.com correspondent, Scott Michella. What's up, Scott? Hey, Layla. How, How you doing? How are you? I'm good. It's I'm always great. nice to see you. Awesome. All right, now, you guys have crunched the numbers and ranked the top three items on G4TV.com. What are people reading, watching, and commenting on the most this week? Okay, well, first on our list is X-Play's video review of Left for Dead. Okay. And gone are the days where zombies shuffled slowly towards you to eat your brains at a leisurely pace. Modern zombies are all in such a hurry. And Left 4 Dead is no exception. The wait is over, and apparently the next best thing to actually playing Left 4 Dead is watching X-Play's review of it. The game has four different scenarios, each set up like a separate horror film, and when you play it, you really, really feel like you're inside a horror movie. It looks great, it's lots of fun, and that's only a few of the reasons X-Play gave it a 5 out of 5. And what do you think of it? I, it's, it's amazing looking and fun to play a game, well, and multiplayer is really fun. I gotta try it, but I like my zombies to be a little slower if you catch my chip. Okay, yeah. what else wound up on your list? of most popular items? Uh, it's another X-Play review, this time for Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe is destined to make just about anyone's shortlist a bizarre video game team-up. But sometimes strange things coming together create a certain compelling synergy. Like Adam said, this pairing is pretty strange. <laughs> it's one of those game titles that you totally do a double take when you see it, actually. If you're a, a DC fan and a Mortal Kombat fan, I'm guessing this one's a no-brainer, but for everybody else, X-Play recommends you rent this one. Okay. It's, uh, it's just not as good as it could have been. All right, well, I'm more of a Marvel vs. Capcom girl myself, so I guess I'll be skipping that one. All right, what's next, Scott? Uh, okay, this one's interesting. Shane Kim, who is the VP of Microsoft's game division, came out and said this. He said that Microsoft will continue producing the the Xbox 360 until one day after the death of the PS3. So let's do the math here. Sony is calling the PS3 a 10-year console. That would mean the 360 would have to survive 11 years and one day, and that is something many people are doubting. Well, how do you feel about that? Because I know you said you're a PS3 boy yourself. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, the PS3 has, you know, the, the Xbox has a head start on the PS3, right. so, and, you know, the, the PS3 is a beefier system. It's, it's, it's faster, for sure. It, it's well, we're just going to have to wait to see how this <laughs> you know, is going to play budget, out. You're not budget, are you? Well, 11 years is a very long time, so I wish them luck on that. Now, yeah. what was the most commented story on G4TV.com this week? Okay, this week the PS3 turned two years old, and Sony announced that they now have... 14 million active PlayStation Network accounts. And that is a pretty big number, but they still have a very long way to go okay. before they catch up to the 360 and the Wii. Uh, this story had hundreds of comments, but our favorite is from Red75, who wrote, My congrats go to both Sony and MS. The competition between the two makes this a great era of gaming. To those of you below me, let's keep the rabid adolescent selfishness to a minimum, shall we? Uh, and there he was quoting Adam Sessler, who cool. last week asked the PS3 and Xbox 360 60 fanboys to to stop the fighting. Well, hopefully they've settled down and they've declared a truce. Yeah, yeah, they're they're playing nice for now, but 
just for now, it seems. Just for now. Well, thanks, Scott. As always, it's great to see you. And a big thanks, thanks to the guys in the G4 newsroom. You guys know who you are. They work 24 hours a day to bring you all the latest news and videos over at G4TV.com. Now, stay right there, because in just a moment, Blair Herder will be here to tell us what games we'll all be playing to work off those calories we're consuming on Thanksgiving Day. And Alison Hayslip goes to Vegas to pick up some hot moves from the Extreme Fighting Association. See you in a minute, guys. Here are the movies that topped the box office last weekend. Number 5, Changeling, with $4.3 million. Number 4, High School Musical 3, scored $5.6 million. Role Models at number 3, with a healthy $11 million. Madagascar 2 garnered a cool $35 million. But Bond crushed them all with a whopping $67 million. We'll see if 007 can do it again next week. Feed Week Review, we are going in-depth on the news that made headlines this week and shaped your world. There were some big announcements in gaming this week. Apparently, it's almost time to finish the fight. Game Informer magazine confirmed that in Halo 3 Recon, players will play an orbital drop, shock trooper, and head to New Mombasa. Bungie also confirmed that Recon will have new toys, like a new PDA device that displays waypoints and a silenced SMG. Meanwhile, Xbox owners spent the end of this week downloading the brand new Xbox experience and creating their avatars. The new interface is supposed to allow users to navigate through menus faster, but apparently some users had issues with the service. Now, for those of you who had no problems, you'll be happy to know that Microsoft is planning on releasing multiple avatar theme packs over the next six months, and we'll keep you posted. But avatars aren't the only thing that the Xbox experience has to offer. You can now install games onto your hard drive. That means decreased loading times, and it's much easier on your disk drive. But X-Play's Adam Sessler went in depth to find out how it works and why you might want to pony up the cash for a bigger hard drive. This week, the new Xbox Live experience jazzes up your Xbox Live account. X-Play puts the old and new head-to-head -head and brings you the results. One of the most promising new features is the ability to install your games to your hard drive to supposedly decrease load times. We tested a few games to see how much time you really save. In GTA 4, the startup is much faster to the tune of 15 to 20 seconds. On a mission, the load time is also decreased, but not quite so much. As far as popping goes, objects still popped in within view, and there didn't seem to be any difference. We tried out two songs in Rock Band 2. Silver Sun pickups came in only six seconds shorter, and Linkin Park a measly two seconds. As one of the most performance-heavy games on the 360, Mass Effect is one we really wanted to see sped up. Unfortunately, installing to the hard drive didn't really help. The texture popping during cutscenes is still present, and the game still locks up during heavy streaming, as in the back alleys of the Citadel. The elevator rides are still as long as they were when the game is not installed. Loading a save file is shorter by about 6 to 10 seconds, but loading while traveling from planet to planet still about the same. Unfortunately, installing games to the hard drive only saves you a few seconds here and there. We're a little impatient, so that's still a plus. But game performance isn't really affected. It's up to you whether it's worth 6 gigabytes of space on your hard drive to save a handful of seconds off the load time. But considering this new Xbox Live feature is now available, we hope that developers start optimizing games to run better off the hard drive. For now, we'll take our extra few seconds to... Oops, we already used them up. I'm sure there are a ton of people spending quality time with their Xboxes this weekend, but next weekend we'll be spending quality time with our families and loved ones and stuffing our faces with turkey. And this will be my very first time celebrating Thanksgiving as an American citizen. USA, so I got very it. excited. But lucky for me, video game expert Blair Herda is here with tips on what games to bring to dinner if you want to survive the holiday. What's up, Blair? Hello, and thank you for having me on the show. It, it's lovely to have you. I mean, it's our, you know. This is our moment. A moment, This yeah. is nice for me. Probably so not so nice for you, but it's nice for me. Let's get to uh, it. Okay, so here's the deal. This could be the biggest year ever okay. in video games, so it's really difficult for me to give a recommendation, like That's a game right. recommendation. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down according to the kind of family that you have so that people out there... Okay. Okay, so first off, let's talk about a typical Thanksgiving. You're at home. You're, you're eating a ton of food, spending about 85% of your time sprawled out on your parents' couch. You guys know what I'm talking about. What you're wasting your life. Get a job, people. Now, I say why not put those extra calories to use in games that require physical exertion? Okay. Grab yourself a Wii and a balance board and do a little yoga with mommy and we fit. 
Or you could get a couple of your ne'er-do-well friends together and rock a little band career mode in Guitar Hero World Tour. That way you can feel like you're exercising, which should eliminate the need to throw up every meal between now and Christmas. That's more up my alley. Guilt relieved. Not the throwing up the other stuff. I wouldn't know what you were talking about right there so much. This is awkward. Okay, so the next family gets together on Thanksgiving, but they don't get together for the turkey and the trimmings. They get together for the inevitable Cowboys Lions Snooze Fest. Football fans, hey, unfortunately, I like you know the what Cowboys. I'm your voice is awesome. All right, so I'm going with Madden 09 here. With improved gameplay and graphics, an online league, and the Madden IQ system, I guarantee you that this will be more fun than watching the Lions limp themselves to an 0-16 season. Um, I've got nothing else to say to you, really. Mm -hmm. In America, it's, it's football here. Right, you mean uh, the real football is the English football, and this is, yeah. The watered-down version. I understand. I'm going to get beat up by a jock. I mean, okay, so then there's my kind of family. I'm talking about the kind that has an alcoholic father, a mother who cries herself to sleep, and a little brother who's accomplished more at 12 than I ever will in life. Now, that kind of family requires a little escapism to survive. Now, if this sounds like your Thanksgiving, you're going to need to immerse yourself in the worlds of Fable 2 or Fallout 3. As you traipse through a post-apocalyptic wasteland or go treasure hunting with your four-legged best friend, your dad and his happy juice breath will be just a distant memory. I'm talking about you, dad. And and speaking of memory, if you've forgotten that you even have a family, then I don't need to tell you to pick up World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King, because clearly you're already knee-deep in orc blood on your way to a level 80. But I've got to ask you, what's your number one recommendation in all this? I know you don't want to get to it, but... You know, it's hard because I try to be biased, because right. I'm not biased because I work on X-Play, but my number one recommendation for Thanksgiving has got to be Valve's new shooter, Left 4 Dead. Okay. It truly embodies the, the spirit of Turkey Day in every <laughs> way, shape, and form. For instance, it brings together large people. It helps develop a sense of familial support and camaraderie and there are tons of feasting now I know what you're probably thinking Layla you're thinking yeah there's feasting but it's on brains which is like totally historically inaccurate to which I reply you were not alive when we stole land from the Indians so you cannot tell me what I can and can't eat on my personal day of things. and uh, I don't think you were alive either I read a lot of books in right. elementary school <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us Blair. you guys make thank sure you. you watch Blair every night at 8 p.m. on X Play. thank you so much Stay right there, guys. We'll be uh, right back. Allison, Hayslip is a badass already, but once she learns some moves from the fighters of the XFA, she'll be unstoppable. It's coming up in just a minute. Stay right there. <laughs> Welcome back to the Feed Week Review. This is the weekly roundup of the only news you need to know. Now, the Extreme Fighting Association is a full contact fighting league, and Alison Hayslip learned some deadly moves from Sean TNT Yarborough. Here's Alison's report from Sin City. What's up, guys? Alison Hayslip here at LA Boxing in Las Vegas, where the most vicious XFA fighters come to sharpen their skills. This is MMA all striking, no grappling allowed. There's literally no wrestling or takedowns of any sort in the newly established Extreme Fighting Association. The only time opponents touch the mat are when they're knocked out. Competitors go toe-to-toe -to -toe for three rounds of non-stop MMA pummeling that can only end by KO, decision, draw, or no contest. It's known as stand-up fighting and is won by force. He's rocked. Monopolized on. Yes, he is. Machaka sees it. Oh, my God. There's a ton of MMA leagues out there nowadays. What makes XFA different? Well, XFA is different because it's all stand-up. Uh, most of the MMA organizations are, you know, have grappling involved and they're in a cage and everything. XFA, we're in a ring and we're doing all stand-up, so that way we can bang the whole time and they emphasize the knockouts. Oh! What percentage do you think is knockouts? And what I, think, I, I think there's about a 70% knockout. Percentage. So you have a Muay Thai background. What exactly does that entail? Uh, Muay Thai is actually Thailand's national sport, so it's kind of like baseball is in America. It involves leg kicks, knees, elbows, and a clinch, as well as boxing and kicking. Oh! John, I'm all geared up. Do you think you can show me some of your moves? Absolutely. Sweet. All right, Sean, this is where you train. Train me. What do I do? So the basic is a jab here. You're going to throw your jab as your left hand. Here's your cross. Here, that's right. And let's see, right. jab, cross, hook now. Jab, cross, cross, and hook. hook. Jab, cross, hook. Oh. Unloading some punishment on the pads is just a taste of XFA. But where the training really pays off is in the ring. That I'm leaving to the pros. That was awesome.
handsome guy is. He's a little tougher than me, huh? <laughs> he's slow, he moves chill, all of a sudden he explodes. I don't know what's coming at me. Because he's TNT. TNT. <laughs> So that's how stand-up MMA goes down in the ring. Some brutal fist-to-face, knee-to-face action, broken bones and bruised egos. That's XFA. Thanks, Alison. Well, I have to say, with UFC stars like wrestler Randy Couture spending more and more time taking each other to the mat, we'll have to see if the XFA provides a welcome escape for people who just want to see two guys punch each other in the face. And for the last story of the day, Guns N' Roses fans, the wait is over. After 14 years, the new album, Chinese Democracy, is finally being released on November 23rd. But GNR has made the entire album available on MySpace. And don't forget to claim your free Dr. Pepper. As promised, the company is giving everyone a free 20-ounce Dr. Pepper on the album's release date. To get your free soda, visit drpepper.com. But hurry, the offer expires on February 28th. Well, guys, that's it for today. But I'll have more news for you all week in the feed over on Attack of the Show. I'm Layla Kaylee, and you've just been fed. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.